Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte F2 A88XN Wi-Fi. Let's start off by talking about compatibility. That is always important when you're choosing a motherboard. This is compatible with AMD A-Series APUs or accelerated processing units that include a CPU as well as a GPU on the same die, which is quite amazing. Um, but basically, if you have an FM2 or an FM2 Plus APU, it should be compatible with this motherboard. That includes FM2 Plus APUs such as Kaveri as well as FM2 uh, APUs such as Richland. Uh, also the A88X chipset is kind of at the heart of this motherboard. It has a support for AMD Ifinity technology right out of the box. This is an ultra durable series motherboard from Gigabyte which means they've used high quality components throughout. Features 802.11 AC Wi-Fi via a dual band uh, 2x2 uh, antenna Wi-Fi module as well as Bluetooth 4.0 as well as ultra cool performance, ultra safe UEFI dual BIOS. We have a little bit more information here on the back which I will give you guys a moment if you want to look over it and read it a bit more closely yourself but for instance you get uh, USB electrostatic discharge protection on the USB ports, also humidity protection via the glass fabric PCB, some cool features like four SATA uh, 3 uh, ports integrated onto the board. There's a quick layout of the I.O. but I'm going to be showing you guys that on the board itself and then down here in the lower left hand corner uh, you can see that well they use IR international rectifier components and you also have the detailed specification specifications of the motherboard if I can pronounce that correctly uh, which includes the processor compatibility as well as all of this other good stuff that's included. Inside the retail box we have of course the motherboard itself which we will be closing with a closer look at. You also have an IO shield always important to install before you install the motherboard in your case and it's color coded so you can tell which inputs and outputs are which. It does have that 802.11 AC Wi-Fi integrated so you get an external antenna with two connectors since it is a two antenna array. Both of them are included in this single beam and it's adjustable so you can uh, sort of angle it to give yourself the best reception that you can achieve. They have included a couple USB, I'm sorry, a couple serial ATA cables right here. They are both all black. They're both SATA Revision 3 compliant. They both all have the metal clips on either end and one of them has a single 90 degree angle bracket. The rest of the plugs are all straight. You also have, of course, your ultra durable F2A88XN Wi-Fi user's manual here which has tons of very useful information. I recommend always keeping that on hand while you do your build. And then you also have a driver disk right here which includes drivers and utilities but I recommend going to the Gigabyte website to download the latest versions as you'll have better compatibility and performance out of the box. You also have this 802.11 AC series utility driver disk. Again, you should be able to download that software off of the Gigabyte website as well. Lastly, a multilingual installation guidebook. And here's the motherboard itself, and if it wasn't already glaringly obvious, this is a mini ITX form factor motherboard, which means it is very, very small, uh, which has become very popular because it is very useful for a small system like an HTPC or a little shoebox system that you can take with you on the go if you like mobile gaming or LAN parties, that sort of thing, um, or if you just need something that doesn't take up much space on your desk. Let's talk about some of the uh, elements of this motherboard. First off, the color, of course, you will notice it's mostly black, which is great because that should fit into the color scheme of many computers, and even the mini ITX systems nowadays often have side windows so let, let you see through to the components inside. Uh, the heat sinks and whatnot on the board are also sort of a, a silverish finish so again that maintains the color scheme. Here's a look at the PCB from the back and you can see it is a matte black finish which looks very nice. Uh, some of the cooling elements on the board are uh, held on with Phillips head spring loaded screws so you can remove those without too much difficulty and then there's the uh, standard universal back plate for your AMD mounting socket or, or cooler mount, I should say. Uh, the socket right there, let me point with my pointer, that's a FM2 Plus socket. It's also compatible with FM2 APUs, uh, so bear that in mind, and you can find the full APU support list on the Gigabyte website. Mounting solution is uh, located above and below that. AMD has done a really good job with their FM1, FM2, and FM2 Plus sockets, as well as their AM2, AM2 Plus, AM3, AM3 Plus sockets, maintaining the same standard for the CPU uh, cooler mounting solution, which means you'll have a lot of compatibility with a lot of different CPU coolers on the market. Just bear in mind towards the bottom here, you do have a little bit of a limited clearance when it comes to the uh, PCI Express slot, which is right below that. So bear that in mind if you're getting something that's larger, especially an air cooler, um, that you're making sure that it has enough space and enough clearance, especially if you're using a discrete graphics card. 
Speaking of discrete graphics card, you got a full length PCI Express X16 slot right there. It is PCI Express Gen 3 compatible. And uh, because it's the only slot, you get all 16 lanes available for your viewing pleasure. Uh, I should mention that uh, it will run at PCI Express Gen 2 if you're using uh, an FM2 APU. For PCI Express Gen 3, you will want an FM2 Plus or Kaveri codename APU. Uh, above that, you can see a small four pin connector um, that is for supplemental CPU power. So make sure you route that over from your power supply. And then to the left of that, you have front panel audio right there, as well as an SPDIF uh, IO port, just a little header right there. So you can connect that up if you have SPDIF needs. Moving up the side, you can see a, a small battery located right there. And then above that, you have one of the two uh, fan headers on the board. It's kind of hidden there by the little cable. Maybe I can push that out of the way a little bit. There you go. Uh, but a four pin fan header right there, that's for a case fan, and it is four pin, which means it's PWM capable, um, which means it can control its speed a bit better if you use a PD PWM compatible fan. Uh, moving on up the board, you have a, uh, an infrared header right there. You also have a heat sink uh, right there, and that's on top of the actual A88X chipset. Uh, above that, you have the front panel connectors. Actually, that's the color-coded ones right there. You also have a USB 2.0 front, pan front panel header, so that can power a couple USB 2.0 ports. And above that, you have your USB 3.0 front panel header. And uh, if you have USB 3.0 on your front panel, well, you have the cable plugs in right there. To the right of that, you have your SATA ports. So you got four of those that are available on this board. Those are controlled directly by the A88X chipset and they do support RAID configurations if you're going for a small storage server, for example, which would be another great use for a, a motherboard this size. RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10, and JBOD configurations are all supported. You also have a uh, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi module right there. That's uh, plugged in right there via a mini PCI Express connector, and the cabling for that routes over here to plug into the antenna at the back of the motherboard. Above that module, you have your main 24-pin uh, motherboard power connector. And then off to the right, you have these long slots, top to bottom, which are your DDR3 DIMM slots. Now, this official support for DDR3 memory on this actually goes all the way up to 2133 speed. And I would recommend, if you're going to be using the APU, uh, and actually going to be running off of the GPU in here versus uh, adding a discrete graphics card right here, go with higher speed memory. AMD has some ex excellent options that are available. 2133 is a great speed to run at because the GPU in your APU will use your system memory, and faster memory means faster GPU. That means better for gaming. You're going to get better frame rates and better performance overall. Another cool thing about the memory slots is they support both AMP or AMD memory profiles as well as XMP or extreme memory profiles, which are actually more associated with Intel. And then uh, lastly, they do support up to 64 gigabytes of memory, at least according to the gigabyte product specs for this, which would mean you need 32 gig DIMMs, which I'm not sure if it actually exists right now. But uh, at the very least, with something like 8 gig DIMMs, you could uh, install 16 gigs of memory in here and be just fine and good to go. But that pretty much does it for our overview of this mother. Oh, wait, no. I'm, I almost completely forgot this part. Uh, I.O. at the back. That's kind of important. Over here on the left, we have a PS2 port. It's a combo port, so you can use that for a mouse or a keyboard, especially if you have an older mouse or a keyboard that you're really fond of. That's a great way to plug that in. Legacy support is often convenient. Uh, you have a couple USB 2.0 ports right here and a couple more USB 2.0 ports right there. That gives you six total available on the motherboard if you include the internal header as well. An HDMI out right there. Uh, I do want to point out that there's a couple different HDMI options that you have available. Um, I should also point out there's two HDMI outs. That's kind of convenient. Um, but the HDMI out can actually do a resolution up to 4K or 4096 by 2160. But that will only be available if you're using the newest FM2 Plus or Kaveri APUs. If you're not, then the HDMI uh, 1.4 support here will only give you a resolution up to 1920 by 1200. So if you are planning on outputting to 4K, uh, make sure you get an FM2 Plus uh, uh, APU, but again, bear in mind you're going to be limited to about 30 hertz over HDMI 1.4. So when it comes to gaming, you might be better suited connecting to the DVI port right there, uh, or at least just not trying to game at 4K. DVI can do resolutions up to 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz, which is pretty cool. Uh, the HDMI's can do 60 hertz if you're lower resolutions, and at 4K only 30 hertz. Uh, here are your two connection points for your included antenna for your 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. A couple more USB 3.0 ports, so that gives you a total of four available if you include the, a couple available on the internal header. You get a gigabit Ethernet port provided by a Realtek gigabit Ethernet chip. And then you have your audio, which is uh, pr supported by a Realtek ALC892 codec, uh, which gives you 7.1 channel support. 
We also got an optical SPDIF right there uh, via a toss link out. And then, uh, of course, you have the standard analog jacks for audio in as well as microphone. I'm sorry, audio out as well as microphone in. A couple quick points to make before we close. One is that that CI header that I pointed out on the motherboard as a, an infrared header is actually a chassis intrusion header. So uh, my apologies, but has now been corrected. And then also this motherboard features a dual UEFI BIOS, which means you have two BIOS chips, so you can revert to one if one becomes uh, fails or becomes corrupted, or you can use it as two separate BIOSes to switch back and forth between, so you can have two separate sets of settings. But that's all for this video. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte F2A88XN Wi-Fi motherboard. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like or a comment or anything you want to do down there in the feedback section, and we'll see you all next time.